I know a lot of you guys have watched this about the Harbor Freight tools into permanent structure using these PBR metal panels to make this building. Wow. I'm gonna actually show you a little later in the video how the manufacturing process of making these is. And there's a few different profiles. This one is actually called PBR. Uh, it's a little taller and it has a flat center and they're all made with a four foot section and then they just stamp it or they actually, it's, it, it's interesting to see the process. You'll see later. And then it's stamped out into this here. And then what I do is I have that put on this is a Harbor Freight Tools uh, permanent or temporary garage, and I've turned it into a permanent structure by putting those PBR panels on it. I've had people tell me that it's not very strong. It is actually really super strong because these are like purlings that hold these two together. So when because of the bends in this like that, it makes it really strong to hold together uh, all those poles when it's all structurally put together. And with these uh, little triangle piece I have on the top here and with the back wall here being strong, being sturdy, it just, there's no sway. It's a very sturdy building. It's actually heavier than it looks as well. Because this is anchored into the concrete, it, I've had 80 mile an hour winds. So people tell me it won't hold snow, it will, I don't know. It, it, maybe it won't because but I've had 400 pounds on the top of that and it was fine So I don't know how much snow you get so I can't tell you that um, But it, it would probably hold quite a bit of weight up there. It just depends on which ones you buy from Harbor Freight the uh, The height of them look at those are the white poles ones this one here I've got a motion light on but if you notice this one's a little flatter that probably wouldn't hold as much snow on it. These poles aren't the gray pole ones are a little thinner than the white ones. They have a different structural system. It's just not quite as strong, but this one still is actually really strong as well for regular, you know. Now, if you put these PBRs on going vertical, you'd lose all your strength because they're very flimsy from side to side. We'll look at some off here. Now these are PBRs. And this one is a different profile. If you see, it has a bump there in two of these. And there's just depends on which ones you order. This one that I just got is flat. And if you can't, you can't really see because it's got rain all over it, but there's one, two, three bumps in the middle and it's flat on the top and these are even a different profile so you can get them in different ones there's a few different ones to get i'll be showing you the machines that do that here a little bit later so you can see it might be raining outside uh, the reason i have this made by 8 by 15 is we have 120 square foot max for a structure and my city will not allow you to have a steel building over 120 square feet so it's just, it's funky. They, they won't give you a permit to do it. So it can be unpermitted under 120 square feet. So that's why I have this made this way. And it's kind of narrow to get in, but I can actually get in here. And I get in my VW bus. And it's a great little garage for that. That's what I made it for. I have two VW buses in these garages. So yeah, I can just walk in here and, and get in. And I can have my rack stay on here. It's kind of nice. Taking the rack off is quite a bit of work, so I wanted something that didn't have to do that. So that's what I made, why I made these size. I actually took the Harbor Freight one, and Harbor Freight, if you're new to the videos, I took the original one, it's a 10 by 17 or something like that, or so, I don't know what the size is, but it was 10 feet wide, so I had to make it, narrow it. So I took, those are conduit, for conduit, an inch and a half. I think these are inch and a half too, but I can't remember. I think these are inch and a half and these are one inch. 
that I don't use. I didn't use those. But um, I use that because this buying just buying the metal to make those was more expensive than just buying the Harbor Freight, you know, portable garage. And it actually stays on here. It's I've had it built for a few years now, and it's actually on there really good. It hasn't moved. I had 80 mile an hour winds again that that did not move this thing. So um, yeah, it's it's pretty good. It's not bad. And like people have asked, why don't I put a piece of flashing on here I'm gonna show you he he makes those two the fights that I filmed the next portion of this video and I actually have them I just haven't screwed them on yet I just a piece of L metal that's bent over that goes on there to trim out the ends I just haven't put them on I have them but as you can see it's raining out today and it is dry inside there so that's the main thing I got those built built this building and it keeps the Sun off of them so it really works well for what I wanted and maybe this will suit you for what you want to do. If you want to make a more elaborate building, this is also going to help you see how that, that stuff's made and where you can get it from. Possibly to have somebody like this in your area, but I'll give you the address and the guy's number. If you want to have something made, he's very small staffed. Price per foot, it changes all the time on this metal because the price of the sheet metal goes up and down based on market and all that stuff. So ask him, ask him how much per foot for, you know, uh, sheet metal siding, whichever one you want. So we're here at the sheet metal shop where they make these panels like this here. And I'm going to show you guys how this works. What it is, it's like a giant bead roller if you've never seen it. Remember, keep, keep. All right, so what we've got here is there's bead rollers are gonna roll out a piece and then there's a giant cutter right here and it's just gonna cut it off to the right length. So this is how this stuff's manufactured, you guys that wondered. I thought it was a stamper really myself, but bead roller is what it is. So he's gonna cut one off for us. Go ahead, Danny. Wow, <laughs> that was impressive. So this is how this stuff's made. He's gonna cut two 10-footers for me. Wow, then it gets to the end and it's just like... I guess it's gonna, he's gotta, he's gotta manually cut it for us. Let's see how that goes. Wow, that is cool. All right, man, that is awesome. All right, guys, we're here at Danny's shop. Uh, I've recommended him for making these panels many times. He has two of these machines with two different profiles. Now, if you've watched my shed video, I'll show a little clip of that. You'll see that I'm talking about PBR panels, which is this height right here. So this has a different name. These are actually what they make sheds, uh, chicken coop roofs. Also, it has a shorter profile, if you notice right here in the stamp. This here is the cutting edge of the machine. So this shears it off to the length that you want. And what it does is it's, it's a giant bead roller. So it has all these different beads in here and uh, it goes all the way along. So it starts out with one profile. So if you look here at the metal, it shows one profile here. As it goes down further, it starts to bend it more and more. And then as it goes all the way to the end, it starts adding more and more profiles to it because you know you can't do it all at once. If you can kind of see through the holes there, that's what you're looking at. Then further down, it does this. It kind of gets further along. And then as it goes along, it gets more and more. And then when it gets to the end, you can see the profile all here, all on there. So it just slowly bends it and then brings it into that profile. And at the very end, it shears it off. 
So again, it starts out in just a big roll of sheet metal. So if you're wondering if you wanted to order, let's say a color, he would have to do a large order for that because if you can see, he does have the materials or he might have a blem or something like that. He gets certain things, like what well, a lot of times he gets is these for like chicken coops and stuff like that. If you're gonna paint it, it doesn't matter. So he gets uh, steel that has, you know, like a blem on it. We'll look at some of those. Like that one's got a stain in it. And this one, for instance, has a stain. So sometimes for a roof, you don't really care, or if you're gonna paint your building, it doesn't really matter. It's amazing, it just has this control board here. It's all done with these buttons, and you just sets it up and then puts it to the right length, and it just cuts it off. Really neat how this works. If you guys wondered, I don't know, maybe he does, he, he can get these profiles and stuff like that if you wanted that kind of roof, but these are what he manufactures here, which is gonna be the most, least expensive. So yeah, if you're wondering how that worked. That's how it works. So basically he has two different profiles. So if you look here, this one doesn't have that little hump on it. It just goes flat right here almost. It's kind of a little bit rounded, but that's how it works. And it has three of these bumps in here. And this one has a different, like two of those. And then it has the little hump there. Let's get up close so you can see two of these and then one on the top of this one. So they still start out with the same uh, width as far as the metal goes and then how it's stamped makes it even less wide than the other one. So anyway, that's kind of how it works. So like if you wanted a chicken coop roof or you wanted to make uh, one of those buildings like I have, this is the place, this is the kind of place you want to go to you don't want to go to Home Depot and order them because they're going to order them from a place like this and then have them stamp them all out. They're only made to a certain length. A place like this can cut them off to the length you want pretty much. I mean, it may not be to the exact millimeter or whatever, but it's going to be pretty close. And it'll be, it's actually, when I did it, it came out really nice and it's the way to go so you don't waste anything. So anyway, yeah. Check them out and see what you guys think if you are looking for these panels. They're available in Riverside. So is it worth it to drive to Riverside and pick them up? Sure, it'll save you a lot of money. This is another machine. Again, this one does the other profile. So they're slightly different than each other. And you know, it starts out again as a roll at the end. And those rolls are super heavy. You gotta use a forklift and stuff. He has a, a lifting machine to put it up on there, a forklift to get it in place. So if you wanna order let's say a particular color or something like that. He has to roll, order the roll. Um, there's, you know, he has to change it out. So that's why, you know, whatever he has on it usually is what you want. And you can just paint it to whatever you want or just leave it if you don't care. So this one happens to be a blem and you can see the color change right here. It's primed over here. And then over here, it's got some color on it. So. That's how it kind of comes like that. And he gets a lot of these blem rolls that he turns into, you know, chicken coop roofs and things like that. So it's a lot cheaper than going to, you know, the pre-made ones. So anyway, really cool to see this in person. Uh, I've been wanting to get over here for a while. And I know some of you guys with these buildings are probably going to be really interested in these videos. Check out the shorts too. I put a couple shorts up on this. So. And again, here's the shear on this one. See those lines right there? I mean, get your fingers the hell out of there. <laughs> and all these parts move, and it does it on its own. So, yeah, nobody's allowed in here, so I'm, I'm, he's letting me come in here to film this for you guys. So let's say you were trying to build a barn or a steel building, and you wanted the C-channel purling. So if you can see those up there are C channel and there's all different sizes of that this machine right here makes those C channels so he doesn't have any examples out well you can see what's coming out of the die right now um, so you can see it's like a C channel with a, with a little lip uh, for studs 
you just can make those. So it goes through this whole system of dies. It starts out. All he does is, if he was, let's say you want a larger C channel or a smaller C channel, he just sets up the spacers in here. It's a lot of work to do, so you have to get it again, larger order if you want to do that. And then it just goes through these dies here. So it starts out, again, let's see what it starts out as. It starts out as a flat piece of metal like this. It's kind of like that, if you ever seen one of those gutter making machines, but it's just much larger. The seamless gutters. So it goes through all these dies here, goes through, flattens it, and then it goes, uh, it puts, cuts the lips on it. Little by little, you can see them just starting to bend a little bit right there and there. And then so that it doesn't, it's good, it does a nice and straight job. And then it starts to put the profile in it and then bends it a little by little. As you come along, you can see it gets more and more bent. And at the very end, it comes out like that. And again, it should have a shear on it. Yeah, so he's got a shear. So he has several of these that come off of there. And then it shears off what you've got at the end. So it comes out of that whole thing. So if you wanted to build like a steel building, this is where you would go to do that. And uh, that's how they're actually made. They come out here, go onto this nice little table, and then uh, stacks them all up. Like me, I'm getting these type of sheet metal roof made here. And uh, this guy are all stacked up and ready to go. And I'm going to put them in the truck and head out of here. All right, that's how the purlings work here, too. He also makes the trim pieces and all that as well. There's these machines for that. This one's a sheet metal bender, does custom work as well, some stuff like that he does. Really amazing, a, a big mill. What's that one? A web a drill press. So he can make some other custom things that are needed for that if you wanted to order it that way. So anyway, that's the stuff. This is the sheet metal profile, one of them. Two different profiles. There's this one, and then there's another one over here. Over here. So yeah, that other profile. So we have on this machine here. I noticed this after it's about to leave. It has both profiles on it, so you can see this profile right here, and then there's also this profile below. So this one can cut two different ones. So one of them looks like that, and the other one looks like this. So on this machine, you see here, on the bottom, the bead roller rolls out that one, and on the top, it rolls out that one. Now this depends on whether you have the sheet metal feeding into the top section or the bottom section. So let's look over here at the bead rollers. So the bottom section's like that. The top section is above. You can see the metal would roll through this section on the top or it could roll through the one on the bottom depending on where you had it loaded. So. This right now it's loaded into the bottom and then if let's bring you back a little bit so you can see but you can also load it in the top I don't know if it cuts them both at once that'd be kind of interesting I don't think maybe not because you'd need two rollers feed rollers on the end those rolls of metal are really heavy just so you know like this piece of this roll of metal right here is super heavy moving that you know it's not easy. Look at this, it's like a train. It's got over here, he has to feed it onto here with a forklift and uh, put it on there. So changing it out, getting it different colors and all that is only for larger orders. If you wanted something specific. 
Anyway, I thought it would be kind of cool to show this in the video as well. Talk to you guys a little later in the video. So where Danny's shop is, as you can see, he hasn't got his sign up yet, but he's been around, he gets so many referrals. That's American Legion next door. This is Mission Inn Avenue. You can just drive in. He's in the gray building right here. The first gray building you go in, and that's how you get into it.